Turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. We're going to be looking today at repentance and faith. Very important doctrine. Christ, beginning in verse 28, saying, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second, and he said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether them twain did the will of his father. His is in the italics here, which could be pointing to the heavenly Father. They say unto him, The first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Notice the order. Repented not that afterward that ye might believe him. Repentance comes before faith. If you repent after faith, you're repenting of sound faith. It's always in that order. Repentance and faith are sacred duties. They're also inseparable, inseparable graces. <clears throat> This comes it's given to us by the working of the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit regenerates one, works within us. I oftentimes use that illustration. Well, John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, verse 44 No man can come unto me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at that last day. In the book of Second. Corinthians, the seventh chapter. <coughs> verse, let's start in verse eight. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent. Repentance, first of all, is a change of heart that leads to a change of character. It's an about face. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were for better but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us and nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Let's say we understand that. The saved child of grace will understand that. God must show us we are a sinner. Bring us to see what we really are. Repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of death. <clears throat> In the book of Acts, the 11th chapter, this is the 16th verse. Peter speaking, verse 16, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that was Pentecost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then God hath then hath God also 
to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. This is when Peter went and preached at the house of Cornelius. And to that time, repentance, God dealt selectively. Here, if he's giving it, repentance, granting it to the Gentiles. As it says there, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. If he didn't grant it, we wouldn't get it. It's that simple. No whips, hands, or butts. Galatians 5.22 This tells me there's not so much about repentance and faith do. We're not justified by the keeping of the law, but by repentance and faith. Galatians 5.22 But I'm in on wrong passage. Galatians 5.22 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, and joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, and faith. I would say it's gifts of the Holy Spirit. Man likes to think he's justified by the keeping of the law. Chapter 2, verse 16, what I was getting at first. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Before you're going to get that faith, you're going to repent. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And we may have the Ten Commandments on our walls. Nothing wrong with that. But as far as looking to them for justification, it will never happen. They only condemn. Being as you know, being deeply convicted by our, our guilt, our helplessness, we throw ourselves at God's mercy. Repentance. God grants us eternal life. All by his great design. I mean, he knew man would sin. He knew man would die spiritually. He didn't create man for man to sin or to die. There's no fault in God. Man brought it upon himself. But yes, he was tempted. Psalms chapter 116. Psalms 116, verse 3. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. And this is one that's in, of course, the prophetically speaking about Christ. But David and his many ordeals where he was hunted, abused. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. Now you think God say, oh, you're too bad to save. No. He can save the phallus. There's characters in Scripture who attest to that. But those he saved must repent first. Lay down our, we must lay down our war, weapons of warfare against the Holy God. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto my rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, my feet from falling. Godly repentance, repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6.
Now this is when the prophet was in the presence of the Almighty. This is, you know, you, you, you read sometimes about people that say that they were clinically dead and saw God. I, I don't believe most of them. I ain't sure I believe any of them. <clears throat> Verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, which is an angelic being. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, ho holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. He's cut off. I'm a goner, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts now he was the lord's prophet he said his lips were unclean he said woe is me it's a sight and unlike what we hear most people say supposedly meet the lord then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs <clears throat> from off the altar. And he said, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, thine inequity is taken away, thy sin purged. Sin problems got to be dealt with. <clears throat> you see here, it's a very serious matter. This is God's prophet. And he considered himself unclean, condemned. Think of the way of salvation. It's, it's God's way. Man couldn't have done it the way God did it. If he would have, and would not if he could have. John's Gospel, the 16th chapter, <clears throat> and the 8th verse. How God brings us to repentance, He allows us to go on and oftentimes in our sins. John 16 and 8. Speaking about the Holy Spirit, when He has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Reprove, He will convince. He will bring it to our attention. He will show us what we are. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He quickens us. If we're dead to sin. He quickens us. Grants us life. Regeneration. The new man. The new man pointing to Christ. We are to become that. Just like that Christ. The new man. Our, our new man. What do we can say about repentance and faith? Acts chapter 2, verse 37. <clears throat> Let me back up a little bit. It's when Peter is preaching, on the day of Pentecost, he laid the murder charge at the feet of the Jewish elite. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now not everybody acts or reacts like these did those did verse 37 now when they heard this they were pricked in their hearts and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And that you shall receive the, whole, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. I mean, regardless of what the Church of Christ are going to say, the word ice means one thing, and what it means is you, you got to be baptized. The first thing you have to do is repent and believe. As we know, Judas was baptized, and he went to his own place. The thief on the cross was not baptized, and he was with Christ that day in paradise. Repentance must come first. Acts 16.30 Philippian jailer. Now he was afraid that the prisoners were going to escape, which would have brought him to death. That was the law. Paul cried with a loud voice, Do thyself no harm to that Philippian jailer who's going to kill himself. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord commands repentance. We are to turn to God with unfeigned confession and prayer, pleading His mercy. We already read Second Corinthians seven eleven. Turn to Luke chapter eighteen verse thirteen. <clears throat> This is when the publican and the Pharisee went and prayed. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalted himself shall be abased. That's where repentance comes in. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. We don't see anything about repentance out of the Pharisee. Only this publican showed a repentant spirit. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear the words Jesus hear. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken the wicked hands that crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it should it was not possible that it should be holding of him. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. This is Christ, our object of faith. We must have faith in Him. And what we just read there was the gospel, how Christ lived and died according to Scripture, was buried and rose again. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
So before you're going to do that, you're going to repent. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Repentance is putting away the folly that you believed to begin before you heard the truth. The truth we don't want to repent of. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe, believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all and call, that call upon him. But up until that time, the Jews thought themselves to have the monopoly on salvation. All other religions were pagan. They were false or nothing at all. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed in and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. His Paul's trust is solely in Christ here. Lock, stock, and barrel, as the saying goes. Not one of these faiths where Christ died for some of your sins. Christ put them all away. We are completely redeemed. As I said, Christ is the object of faith. Hebrews 7.25 Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come to, unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. This is who we put our trust in. He must, we must, it's, I mean, if we were granted salvation and said, you, there you go, you, you're saved, but if you fall one time, it's over. Christ must intercede our case continually while we live in these bodies or else we would be lost again Christ made a perfect salvation in chapter Hebrews excuse me chapter 10 verse 12 but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever set down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You're not going to lose your salvation. There's a good example. <clears throat> Old Testament, I think it's Second Chronicles. So I'll get to it here in a minute. A man named Manasseh. His father Hezekiah was a righteous man. Manasseh was extremely wicked. Burned his children through the fire, sacrificing to pagan God. He caused Israel to sin. Shed innocent blood throughout Jerusalem. Nothing good you could say about the guy. It's all wicked. In the second second Chronicles, thirty three, second Chronicles, thirty third chapter. We talk about Ahab and Jezebel. They didn't have nothing on Manasseh. Verse 9 of Second Chronicles 33. 
So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains and the host of the kings of Assyria and took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to battle. And now that among the thorns they'd chain you, tie you to a horse and drag you through the briar patch. You can imagine how that felt. Carried him to Babylon. I, I can't tell if they first took him to Nineveh, which is highly likely, then took him to Babylon. Went from bad to worse. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the Lord his, of his father. <coughs> And he and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. There's nobody that's too bad to be saved. This man's a great example of that. There's a sad thing is when a people believe the truth and adhere to God's word and go into apostasy, reject the truth, as I mentioned in Nineveh a while ago, Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonas, but four generations later, they were worse than ever and judgment fell. Think about the a lot of there's a lot of countries that are well they say they they want peace but in truth they want handouts and they want war they just want a better chance to win the war. Those countries that are anti-God, would you want to live in one? Would you want to live in Iran or Iraq? I would not. China, they don't they don't want Christianity the only religion that offers re true redemption because it grants the propitiation. That is Christ dying in the sinner's place. It's the only religion like it. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Therefore, all must repent. Then there is none that understand. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. This is quoted from the Psalms. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, and their tongues, with their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruct, destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth might or may be stopped and the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's why we have to have the law. It shows us we're a sinner in need of a Savior. It shows us that we must repent and believe the gospel. Christ when he began to preach there in the Gospel of Mark, basically the first thing he began to say, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the Gospel. That's all I have in our study on repentance and faith.